Why are you crying? I messed up You messed up as now. No, you did. It's all right now. Today on FSM News, we remind you how to move forward without forgetting your past. So keep calm and stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Hello, and welcome to FSM News. I'm Zaria Safaro. And I'm Hannah McEwen. So Hannah, is there anything from your past that's made you stronger? You mean like a Sankofa? Yeah, which is? Well, a Sankofa is the Asante Adrinka symbol of a bird with its head turned backwards, taking an egg off its back. This represents moving on to the future, but not forgetting where it came from, or letting bad things get to you. Exactly. This principle is so important, we decided to do an entire show on it. Our first story focuses on how Jessica Finister overcame her anger. Here's Jessica with her Poetic Justice. Sixth grade, I had a lot of things like going on with my mom and her relationships and my own relationships. And it was like really tough for me because I was, I don't know, because I was young, I guess. And like I really didn't know how to deal with a lot of that stuff. My mama, she had rough relationships with men and like they was arguing and I didn't really too much like that too much because it sounded like they was fighting but I didn't go out there because if I would have went out there then I would have been fighting too so I just stood up got real tall and big with the most like you want to <laughs> I was so serious like I was like you want to touch my mom and I pushed the wall and it was like and then they came in and I was like what is that and I'm like oh it didn't really get to that point very much yet like it, it didn't start not working until like I got this assignment in my class. My teacher was Miss Davis. She gave us this assignment and it was like basically we had to write a poem and it had to be realistic and then I had to write a poem about myself and about how certain things made me feel and once I wrote that it like lifted like a big weight up off my shoulder and then just ever since then it felt better than punching the wall. At first I didn't really like Cause I I never really I never really like talking to people about how I feel like I never even like talking to my mama I like even my best friends like they ask me what's wrong and I just keep walking or whatever I was doing I just ignore them but then like when she gave me that assignment I start writing if I'm mad I won't punch a wall or if I'm sad I won't cry I just sit down and start writing and then that, it make me a lot more happier than I am. Like, if you know me, like, if you know me, know me, you see me smiling all the time, you'll never catch me with attitude. My favorite poem that I wrote is called Letters to the Street. And it's about basically gang violence and like gun violence. To whom it may concern. This world was not meant for these things we made it. Only if someone can admit. Admit to the wrong we have done. We as in more than one. Edgar Allan Poe was one of my biggest inspirations. My favorite poem by Edgar Allan Poe was Annabelle Lee. And not only because it was about love, but it was like about how far he would go. But Annabelle Lee, she was like his wife and she died. And she like she died of a disease and she, she died in her sleep. And like the poem was so deep because he went to the point where he said that he laid next to her in her grave. And he laid there every night he went to sleep to her, with her while she was in her grave and like I just feel like that's so deep. Like that's like that land right there can like do something to your span, like send chills down your span, like send you to a place that you never thought you would go before. Well maybe things could change if we all come together. Together as a team. Cause you know things can't change with just me. So let's make this real safe. Let's do what we have to. Even if we have to have a slow pace. Either way, let's make it so we can see a better day. Then will we all be able to say, today is a much brighter day than yesterday. From that concerned girl walking these wild streets, Jessica. That makes me want to change my way of dealing with anger. Yeah, sometimes you need to let that anger out because you never know the effects it will cause. True, true. Martez had to do with the same thing. Here's Martez Crosby's story on recovering from the unrecoverable. It was Christmas Eve. Every, like, we 
I was with my nephew and all that. He used to stand up, just cookies for Santa Claus and all that, waiting on his gifts. I was in my bed asleep. I woke up. My mama, she, uh, she told me to come upstairs behind my daddy. Uh, they told me that there was an accident. She had died. The daddy made it, but she had died. Uh, this car spent out, the car spent out. The car flipped over, hit the tree. Like I couldn't go to sleep. I stayed up till about. I stayed up all night, basically. I didn't go to sleep till like seven in the morning. But we was really close. I, I used to babysit her and all that. I would take her to her daddy, cause her daddy he was at my brother's house, so I take her to to him. And on the way there, she was always saying, she asked me, do she want to hear me hear her sing? And I say, yeah. She started singing gospel music. If I could see again, I uh, uh, want to hear her sing again. Her personality, like, she, like, she cared about, like, she cared about the, her family and the people she was around. She was outgoing, like, she was friendly to even people she didn't know. The last thing I was baby, I was babying saying her, I was babysitting her again, like, because her daddy was outside my brother working on the car. And we was watching TV, like we was watching cartoons and all that, and just laughing. I feel like the world's gonna end, like I can't move on with my life. We didn't want to accept it. To recover from it, we had, like we go to church, so, like the whole family went to church. And the pastor said, do anybody want to come up for prayer? And we all went up for prayer. And after prayer, like, everybody started shouting in the church. My point is, like, like, if you lost somebody and you can't get over it, they're in a better place now, so don't forget them, but just keep moving forward. Speaking of moving on from difficult tasks, Here's Paris Manning with the deficiency that made her efficient. The Wayne syndrome is the abduction from the eyes. Say as in, I wasn't born with a nerve in my brain. So the way I look a certain, like if I look a certain way, my eye would go up or it would go in and my eye would close and it would be just a scary sight. And so I have, I've always been born with this that just tilt to my head. So if I look a certain way, my head would tilt. Every time I would like look a certain way at someone or I would meet somebody for the first time, it kind of gets awkward because they will always ask, what's with your eye or something like that? And it would get very frustrating. So people see me as a freak sort of because of the way I look. And I don't get, of course, I don't get many looks from guys. So. You know, yeah, it kind of hurts. Say if somebody was to say something to me, I would dwell on that all day long and then think about it over and over in each class I'm in or if I'm at home when I'm just watching TV, I'd be like, why did she say that? Why did he say that? What did I do to them to make them think that? It's kind of con like a contradiction. Like if a person tells me you look beautiful, that's not that's not dependent on me telling me that's beautiful. Like say my mom said, say I'm beautiful. I'm gonna cancel that out because I don't, she's my mom, she's supposed to say that. Like it's not, it's not nothing new. But if a, say if a boy tells me I'm beautiful, that's different because it's, it's a stranger that you don't know, you're just not knowing, and they're trying to flirt with you and get to know you and they have interest. They're not family. All through elementary school, I was being teased about it. But when I hit ho fourth grade, it was like, wow, like a ton of bricks hit you. Like, it's crazy how people can change so quickly. Like, for instance, I was, I, I was getting into fourth grade and this boy named, I'm not gonna say his name, it's not necessary. Um, he, 
basically he was just trying to be cool, just trying to be tight with the guys. So he would made he made this new name for me called Sweet Eye. Cause he got the name cause he got the name from the Sour Patch Kids. Candy, you know how one eye is open and one eye is it is sm closed. So he got that from the thing and he called me Sweet Eye. Couple years later, I embraced the name because everybody was calling me that now. So I made it sweetie.com, you know, I made it, embraced it, and it was nice. And everybody was like, sweetie.com, whenever I would like start dancing. The fun times, it turned it from an insult to an endearment, a term of endearment. And I loved it. Like, it was great. So, yeah, it turned from good to bad situation. I would just say I was born this way and keep it moving. Very inspiring. Yes, yeah, sometimes you need to make new changes to be a better you. That's what Richard Porter did. So here's Richard with Changing for the Best. I was going down the wrong track with the wrong crowd and the wrong state of mind. Only thing I wanted to do was make trouble and have fun. I didn't really care about consequences and I wasn't really conscious of what I was doing. Eighth grade, oh my God. The year was, the year was freaking awesome. I did everything I wanted to do. Like, I was bad. I didn't listen to teachers, I didn't take any warnings. But the repercussions of my actions was terrible. I went to summer school. Then the teacher was like an old mean lady because she said, I gotta waste my time here with you guys when I can be at home soaking my feet. She said it like every day. I passed summer school with straight A's. And my mother and grandmother was not really particularly proud because it was like, you could have just did this in regular school. Why don't you waste our time? And then when I graduated from summer school, they gave me a diploma with the wrong name. That summer, I actually moved because my mom felt like if I separated myself from the crowd that I was with, I would do better. And when we moved toward the east side of town on 69th Place in Stony Island, I was a lonely individual that whole summer. Because like after summer school and I graduated, I was just in the house because I didn't know anybody. And like if I go down the street, I don't know what happened because, you know, gangs and everything I saw. And I had a lot of time to reevaluate myself. And I became a whole different person. Like I needed glasses and I got glasses. And I actually sat in front of the class and paid, like gave the teacher my undivided attention. I met, I sat with a different crowd, you know, different from what my friends used to be. And we actually started talking, and we have a, like a really close knit circle. Um, these guys and gals actually keep me on track. Like, if I say I don't want to do this work because it's boring, they'll be like, "Come on, man, you got to do this. You need this grade." And since I'm a senior, they'd be like, "You really need this to graduate. So let's do it and get it over with." We only have so and so blah 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 months left. Um, the major thing is I have a job. And even though it's only two days a week, I think about the job all the other days because I can't wait to come back. I work at uh, Free Spirit Media at the Gary Coleman Youth Center. And it's pretty fun. It's like a good group of people. Everyone laughs and jokes. And it's just entertaining. It keeps me in a good state of mind because it's like good vibes all through the room and things. Miss Teresa, she actually emails me from time to time about new scholarships that I should be aware of. Overall, I learned to actually listen to my teachers because they do have your best interest at heart when it really comes down to what you have to do to go on to the next level. And now I'm on the path to graduating. Being able to do better is a great character trait for everyone. Yes, you know that, wouldn't you? Here's your story on Rising Above Hurt. When I was younger, and still to this very day, on my mama's side of the family, I was the youngest and I was the only girl. And then on my dad's side of the family, I was the youngest of 27 first cousins. So I came from a big family. Since I was the only girl, like I'll just play all the boys, um, all the same games that the boys played. Like I'll play Pokemon with them. I'll go outside and play baseball, basketball, football with them. Um, whenever they would do like wrestling stuff, I would do the wrestling stuff with them. So I grew up playing rough. 
I wasn't very a gentle person or anything at all. Whenever I played with the girls at my school, they were very insensitive about it. And they would be really mean, like, oh, stop that. Don't pull my hair. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then since I did play rough, the girls automatically assumed I was a lesbian. So they started treating me differently and singling me out and bullying me. I was put into an after school program at Tule Park because neither my mom or my dad could pick me up after school. And there was this group of 13 and 12 year old girls and they were pushing me and shoving me around and they were bullying me. And one day they just decided to shove me into a locker. That was like one of those halfway lockers and they just shoved me in there. And I was locked in the locker for three hours. With me, nobody tried to stand on my side. It was, it was a bad experience. As I got older, I started freezing people out. I just couldn't handle it. My mom was a great person to talk to about it because she understood. And my mom was that person who always had my back. I joined Girl Scouts since it wasn't good going with the girls at school. And I met my best friend, Tasia there. Tasia influenced my life in a lot of ways. She taught me how to be gentler and taught me that girls actually doesn't, don't like it when you like throw them and wrestle with them and stuff. She taught me like how to be girlier. She taught me just a lot of things and some life lessons at that. But yeah, I just made a full turnaround and I'm not shy anymore. Now I just go up and talk to people and even if it's a person I don't know, I'll ask, hey, are you okay? Because I know I would have wanted that. I know I would have wanted somebody to like ask me, am I okay when I was having my bad day? So now I'm just that type of person to do that to with everyone. And I don't try to bring negativity into a room. I try to keep it away. Well, there are so many things that lie unknown. It surely helps to be able to let it out. Yeah, well, that's our show for today. Check us out next week for more FSM news. But what if we can't wait until then? I'm glad you asked. Viewers can also check us out on Facebook. Just search FSM News. And don't forget, you can also find us on ABC7 Chicago's website in the community section. You can also watch us on Can TV channels 19 and 27 as well. Three, two, one. That's, that's a wrap. wrap. Well, there are so many things that lie unknown. It surely helps to be able to let it out. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, not like, yeah, like not, you can even say, yeah, not. <laughs> well, that's our show for today. Check us out next week for more FSM news. But what if we can't wait until then? I'm glad you asked. Viewers can also. <laughs> But what if we can't wait until then? I'm glad you asked. Viewers can also check us out on Facebook. Just search FSM News. Is this there recording? A little bit more. Is Free Spirit Media cultivates diverse youth voices to transform media and society.